Okay, today I'm going to show you folks how to make fork flowers. And these are reminiscent of the dandelion bouquets that we all probably picked for our mothers. And what you do first is you, you just need a kitchen fork. The taller, the better. I always work with a four prong fork. And um, if you're working with kids, you can do this with plastic, but you want to make sure you keep your tension loose. Otherwise, you will have some breakage of the prongs, so you don't want that. There's a couple ways to do this. The first way I'm going to show you is to take a piece of yarn in a contrasting color and put it right in the middle here. And then take your yellow, we'll make a little dandelion. Take your yellow and put it in the same, start it in the same prong there. So this is probably about six to eight inches. Hold that down at the stem of the fork and then you want to put your yellow so the the tail of it is going to be in the back of the fork and then you just weave around each one of these prongs and just keep going just pushing it down as you go and you want to make sure that you're you get a lot on here and I'm using just a regular worsted weight just really pretty cheap yarn. You can do this with any kind of yarn since you're not going to be wearing it or washing it. There really are no limitations. So I try to get pretty close to the top. But at the same time, you want to leave yourself room to tie this. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Okay, what I'm going to do now, and this is why when you get more experience at this, you can use all the same color. So your tie will, like what I would normally do is use a yellow as my tie, but I wanted to be able to show you for video purposes and also for beginner purposes, you want to be able to grab this tie because if you grab the wrong and you pull, pull this, once you slip it off, your whole flower will unravel. So you got to make sure you have the right end here. And then usually what I'll do is I'll put it right between my knees to kind of hold it. If you're working with a friend, uh, you can have that person hold it. And then I tie it kind of tight, just and it's not a full knot. I just want to have some tension on it. And this is the tricky part. This is kind of do or die right here. Because if you slip it off and you do it too quickly, all the you can completely lose your flower. So what you want to do is very slowly, I grab at the bottom and kind of have tension, you know, kind of get a hold of it, slip it off. Okay, so it looks like this. As you can see, this is very loose, and this could go either way if I'm not careful. So what I'll do then is set it down and pull this very gently. Pull that tight. Now you want to make sure that you have yarn that's going to hold up. Sometimes like um, some thin wools will sometimes break at this point and that's not a good thing. And then just tie this. I usually tie like two knots. There we go. And then just pull your end down. And what you can do since you do have yellow here you can go and take your yellow end and kind of wrap it around where the green was if you don't want that green to show. Cut off our, our ends here. Okay, now to make the stem, you can either use like a 20 gauge craft wire, which is fine. Um, the problem is that sometimes this, this wire doesn't, it's a little challenging to work with. So most of us have paper clips in our homes. And I've also been known to be a little resourceful here. So if you want to go kind of MacGyver style here with this, I want to make it, you want to come out, come down through the top and of the flower and come out by the ties that you had. This is the same color I used for the tie. It doesn't really matter though. And I'm going to tie this on right up by the stem, right by the top of the stem here. Just going to tie a little knot. And we do um, glue these too. So you'll be able to secure all this with a dot of glue in just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to push that up to the top. And then I'm going to hold all the ends down here by the wire, by our paper clip here. And I'm going to just wrap around all the way down. Now, if you wanted to make these longer, of course, you would use heavier wire, uh, or just longer pieces of wire. I recommend the thicker wire is going to be easier just to support the flower if you put it in a vase or have it standing somewhere. I'll trim this off. It's shorter than the, the piece of wire. You can seal that hole. You want to make sure that you're covering 
all the yellow especially because you don't want to see that. You just keep going. And then what I'll do is I'll fold this up at the end just a little bit. And you can use a players, jewelry making players, uh, or just whatever players you have around your house. And what you can do, and if I was going to actually do this and not try to speed along here, I would probably put a dot of glue right here and let it dry for a bit and then continue wrapping. And I go all the way back up. And I'll just cut this off. Leave yourself enough room to make enough yarn to make a knot. I barely did here. Um, and then what you're going to want to do, do you knot this off? I usually knot it twice. What you'll want to do is put a dot of glue up here at the top. And I use uh, E6000. Works really well to keep this in place. And you have a choice. You can have this be your finished little lapel pin by gluing on. When I glue the, put the dab of glue right there, I'll put a little dab on here and attach one of these little pins and that ends up looking like this. So this is one I made. It's just a little dab of glue there. Put it on your lapel and, it's, and these can be shaped and twisted any way you want. Um, cute little pins. Since this is a dandelion, what you can do to make it look a little more uh, authentic, you can just clip all these loops. And you can do this no matter what kind of flower you're making. So as you can see, this looks a little more, a little closer to what a dandelion actually looks like. Um, so that's kind of fun to do. And then um, if you want to make the dandelion that goes to seed, what I would recommend is using like this fun fur yarn that you can find this pretty cheap now because the fun fur craze has kind of ended. So um, this is a great thing you can do. For this, for this one, same kind of deal. You just start it and I'll show you, I'm not gonna weave the whole thing because I think you get the idea of what you do here. But when you start using novelty yarns, one of the challenges is you can't really see what you're doing. So as you can see this pretty quickly looks like a pretty big mess of, you know, so you kind of, this is something that I recommend that you do the practice with the worsted weight and then switch to nov novelty yarns just so you can get the hang of it uh, before you are unable to see what you're doing. So yeah, so I hope you guys have fun making some flower, fork flowers with your kids or for yourself, for your wedding reception, whatever you decide to do. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, jennifer at craftsanity.com, and I'll have a PDF with some instructions and some photos for you to download if you're interested.